Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we discussed about pressure variation with position, and we identified that in the horizontal plane, the pressure does not vary. So, if we consider a horizontal plane in a fluid bulk, we can identify that the pressure at each and every point on the plane it will be same. Whereas, as depth go on increasing, that is in the vertical plane, you will observe that the pressure continually go on increasing. and we have identified it by considering a small elemental area from a fluid bulk and after analysis we have identified that the pressure gradient in the depth direction that is in the z direction it is equal to minus rho g and it is known as the hydrostatic law in this part we will discuss about the submerged plane surfaces so there are numerous uh, cases we have in practical applications in which the plane surfaces are submerged under water or under fluid and we are interested in finding out the forces that acts on to these surfaces so here in this uh, lecture we'll discuss about horizontal and vertical plane surfaces and how does the pressure acts on to it and how does this pressure results in some pressure forces and how we can identify what is the resultant force acting on to the plane surfaces so let's consider two examples so the same Uh, case we have but only the thing is here we are focusing on to the bottom surface of this tank whereas in the second case we are focusing on this vertical walls so first talking about this tank bottom so it's a horizontal plane surface we have over which the water is present so the depth of this uh, horizontal plane surface from uh, free surface of water it is equal to h and as we know the on horizontal plane the pressure will be same everywhere that's why the pressure which is acting here will be equal to rho gh so uniform pressure distribution we will have so it is same like uniformly distributed load and hence we can identify that the resultant force it will act at the centroid of this plane surface so this is the centroid at which the resultant force will be acting so this resultant force have to be calculated what is the value of this resultant force have to be determined whereas in the second case you can see that uh, the vertical wall if we consider so we know as depth gone increasing the pressure will also increase so the pressure distribution it is not rectangular like this it is a triangular pressure distribution we have that is pressure continually go on increasing as we go deeper and deeper so here at this depth if we are considering this height as h you will get pressure equals to rho g h but when we consider different depths the different pressures you will get so here in this case in a simple manner we can't calculate the resultant force and one important thing is the resultant force it will act somewhere below it is because the pressure we are the pressure distribution we are observing here so it shows that the greater pressures are present at the bottom that's why the resultant force will definitely will be on the lower side and it will not be on the center of this uh, triangle or center of this plane so this is the point at which the resultant force it will act so now here we'll give one definition that is known as center of pressure so the point at which the resultant pressure force acts it is known as center of pressure so this point as well as this point it is known as center of pressure and hence from this easily we can identify that for horizontal plane surfaces the center of pressure and center of gravity or centroid they will coincide whereas in this vertical plane surfaces they will not coincide there will be some distance present in between the center of pressure and center of gravity so from this we can conclude that we have to calculate or we have to uh, determine the magnitude and location of resultant force so the question is what is the magnitude and location of resultant force and how to calculate that so now we will see how to uh, determine the magnitude and location of this resultant force so first we'll uh, consider some examples in which such a situations are occurring so here you can see a dam wall is there and this dam wall it is in contact with the water at rest so it is exerting some pressure force onto it so that we are going to determine and we are seeing how we are determining that so it's a curved surface we have it's not a plane surface it's a curved surface later on we'll uh, again uh, see about this curved surfaces also how to determine forces acting on curved surfaces here you can see Uh, the dam wall we have and uh, some plane surfaces vertical plane surfaces you can observe here similarly here again uh, this vertical plane surfaces submerged under water we have 
and this water is exerting some pressure force on it and it have to be determined so this system it should sustain that pressure and we have to design for that uh, amount of pressure and they should work properly so for this we should determine what is the resultant force acts and where does it acts so now first we will determine magnitude of the resultant force so let us consider a free surface we have so it's a free surface of water and below this water or fluid is present and within this uh, fluid one plane surface is placed vertically so it's a front view front, front view you can uh, observe here so one vertical plane surface is there and side view of it we can show so the side view is like this so here we are considering arbitrarily shaped uh, surface so we are not considering directly rectangular uh, circular so right now we are considering arbitrarily shaped and it, were, it can be extended to uh, the specific shape like rectangular circular or triangular etc and this plane it is named as OO so this is the free surface this plane it is known as OO this is the vertically immersed plane surface we have and it is a side view of it so now what we are interested in calculating the resultant force but we identified that as depth go on increasing on the vertical plane surface the pressure also increases so as pressure increases it means that the pressure forces will not be uniform throughout so the pressure forces will be different but one thing can be concluded is as the pressure forces act perpendicular to the plane surface they will be parallel to each other so as they are parallel to each other what we can do is we can consider one small elemental area da so we will consider first a very small elemental area da so after extending it on the side view you can see this shaded portion which is the small elemental area da now we can consider a force which is acting onto this small elemental area da so let us assume this da it is at a depth of h from free surface and the small force which is acting on to onto this elemental area is a df now what we will do is we will calculate this df and then we will consider such a small element throughout the surface so such a small element we will consider throughout the surface and we will identify what is the small force that acts onto this elemental area and then we will add up all such a forces so add up means what we are going to integrate so right now we will consider very small element elemental area da and a very small force df acts onto it so what is the value of this df so we know force is equal to pressure into area and uh, let us consider pressure at this elemental area at a depth of h is p and this area is da so p into da is the small force acting onto this elemental area and we know from hydrostatic law this pressure can be calculated if we know this depth so depth is h it means that the pressure acting here it it is rho g h so d f equals to rho g h into d a so this is the small force which is acting onto this elemental area but now we can consider all such elemental areas onto this surface and we can integrate so if i want to calculate the total force which is the total resultant force i can integrate this equation so integrating d f over the entire area a we will get integral of rho g h d a into a so now next we consider that rho and g are constants that is density and acceleration due to gravity it will not vary density is the property of fluid which we are assuming constant and acceleration due to gravity it's a parameter which is assumed to be constant so taking it outside the integral we will get such an equation and we know this integral of h da it is the same as that of the first moment of area equation so this first moment of area we are making use of when we have we have studied about finding out centroid so locating centroid of the surfaces that we have studied so in this case we are making use of this first moment of area so the equation that we have used in this case it was this uh, integral of h da divided by a so this h bar is the location of centroid so from certain reference so here the reference we are assuming is this free surface so let us consider this is the point which is known as centroid of the surface which is at a depth of h bar from free surface so this is the reference we are selecting so this distance if you want to calculate we will make use of such a equation which is integral of h da by a so solving this what we will get is we can write it like integral of h da equals to a h bar so now this we can put here into the equation so putting h da integral of h da equals to a h bar here you will get the resultant pressure force so resultant pressure force equation is rho g a h bar and from this it is clear that rho g into h bar it is the uh, pressure it is the pressure acting where 
as h bar is the distance of center of gravity or centroid from the plane surface it is the pressure acting at this location so we can write resultant force equation as pressure at centroid so this is the centroid of the plane surface we have so pressure acting at the centroid multiplied by area of the surface it will give you the total resultant force as we identified what is the resultant force we should also identify where does it acts so we have to determine position of the resultant force so let us assume that the resultant force it acts somewhere here and this point it is marked as c it is also marked it can also be marked as point p so this is the center of pressure center of pressure is the point at which the resultant pressure force acts and we can identify that the pressure distribution is triangular and hence the resultant force it will be on the lower direction or lower side and hence the g and c this relative positions if you see the center of pressure will always be below the center of gravity when we talk about vertical plane surfaces and now we'll uh, try to determine its position so to determine the position we can take moments about o so to take moments about o first define this distance h star which is the distance of the center of pressure from the free surface of water so taking moments about o what we'll get is so we'll take moment of this resultant force so resultant force is fr this perpendicular distance is h star so fr into h star is the moment of fr about this point o and now such a df small forces we are considering over the entire area so we have to sum up all such a forces so the moment of this df is what df into h so df into h is the moment of this small force and for all such a forces we can sum up the moments so summation of moments will be what integral of df into h over the entire area t now we can solve this so we know df equals to rho g h so force equals to pressure into area so rho g h into d a into h it will be the right hand side and what we will get next is f r into h star equals to rho g into integral of h square d a over the entire area a and now again this integral of h square d a is the second moment of area which is uh, denoted by i o so it's the second moment of area about this reference o so i o is the moment of inertia we can call or it is known as also second moment of area and this second moment of area is h square d a integral of h square d a and it is equal to i o but now we are interested in uh, finding out the location of this point c with respect to g it is because this g location that is central location can be easily found out and if we know this location this relative if positions we are knowing we can easily find out the location of c that's why we are expressing this uh, second moment of area about o instead of this we are expressing it in terms of centroid uh, g so that is moment of inertia at g we are interested in and once we know this we can easily identify this location that is h star so from parallel axis theorem we know the io that is uh, moment of inertia about certain reference plane it is equal to moment of inertia about the centroid or center of gravity plus area into the distance between these two points which is h bar and its square so ig plus ah bar square it is nothing but io so this is known as parallel axis theorem and from this now we can put this uh, io here so integral of h square d over entire area a is i o and putting this i o equals to i g plus a h bar square so this equation you will get and solving this shifting f r on to right hand side uh, you will get rho g into i g plus a h bar square divided by rho g a h bar and after solving this at the end you will get h star equation so after solving and rearranging all the terms you will get h star equals to i g upon a h bar plus h bar so this h star is what it's a position of resultant force it means that h star is the distance of center of pressure from free surface of fluid and this is nothing but the position of resultant force we can have so h star equals to ig upon h bar plus h bar from this equation it is clear that h star will be definitely greater than h bar because this ig upon h bar will be definitely a positive quantity and adding this positive quantity into h bar it will give you a larger depth that's why h star will be definitely higher than h bar and hence we can comment that center of pressure will be definitely below centroid or center of gravity of the plane surface thank you